So it's a 3-0 and start for the L.A. Lakers, who play three games in the season's first four days. Come up with three wins out of it. 131-127. Anthony Davis off to a fantastic start, but as much as they want A.D. to be the man, the guy, LeBron James at 39 is still pretty, pretty solid. 32, 14, and 10. He had 16 points in the fourth quarter alone. <clears throat> that was his fourth triple-double since turning 39. He's not the oldest player in NBA history with a triple-double. That was Carl Malone, who did, oh, got one in, I as never, a Laker I never got that. at the age then. of 40. I, I didn't. That. I didn't that's but just wow, I mean, bravo to LeBron James. 32, 14, and 10. It's just amazing to watch that he can keep going at this level. This is elite level after coming off a summer where he had to play extremely hard. Mm-hmm. And once again, it's a small uh, sample size, but J.J. Reddick once again is saying, A.D., I'm not letting you off the hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, connect 20 minutes, 4 of 7. He knocked down a couple of threes as well. The other question for me is that at LeBron's age, I know we've been asking this forever, but he's 39. He's going to be 40 in December. Uh, and with Anthony Davis's injury history, is this sustainable, that formula with those two carrying that much of the load? I think it can be because in today's NBA versus our NBA, they don't have as many back-to-backs. They don't practice as much. So all the hard days of practice are gone from training camp. Now it's up for J.J. Redding and coaching staff and obviously the training staff Mm. to manage when they practice, how long do they get extra sleep at the back-to-backs, things of that nature, because you know guys aren't going hard in the practice schedule throughout the season. Mm. Yeah, and I also look at the 3D. I think they can go, but I think to your point is can they win games Mm -hmm. and win enough games because – I think right now they have to have home court advantage. I mean, I look at them and, and say, well, you don't want to be in sixth and seventh in the Western right. Conference right now right. playing somebody like OKC and whoever might be at the top. I, I think they have to have a four, four seed to be able to make some more noise with LeBron and AD, you know, trying to get back to win the championship. It's been a long time since the bubble. It is remarkable, and you shouldn't take it for granted. Nope. LeBron turning it on in the fourth quarter. And he kind of flipped the switch. He had a lot left. There's a lot left there. At, at year 22, Woo. can't say it enough. It's it's just remarkable. It's amazing. Time for our State Farm assist of the night, and it comes off the fingertips of one. Behind Weminyama's 29 points, 109 to 106. Obviously, Weminyama, a phenomenon like we haven't really seen in the NBA. What are your expectations in terms of growth? And, and he – alluded to it, strength <laughs> in year two. I think the growth's going to be uh, tremendous because we know one thing, uh, Matt, the whole Spurs organization is making sure he's taking good care of his body. Smith, you know this. Before and after every game, the stretching and all the exercise he's doing. So what we're watching, I'm not surprised. It's the fact that now he's more efficient, Matt. It's one or two dribbles, I'm to my spot, I'm rising up, shooting over because you're too small, or I'm stretching out to the basket and scoring. And a great point you brought up. Having Chris Paul now, Smitty, yes. now it's easier baskets in the pick-and-roll situation because we know he's one of the best in our game ever. Well, I'm talking to the Spurs last year when we were there to do a game. You know, Greg Popovich was talking about how some of their guys, and you guys know, young guards don't even always know how to throw post-entry right, right, passes. Right, they don't right. play that way throughout right. their life. Having a guy like Chris Paul will do what for Wimby? You know, it's going to make him understand the game, understand the way to think the game. I mean, I think right now he's just so much raw talent. He just plays it. He plays it at a high level. Just those three or four plays in a game, Matt, where he gets a chance to get a slip, a easy buckets. I think he didn't get easy buckets last year other than lobs or tip dunks. What I love right now is, though, he's getting to the free throw on that line a little bit more. I still love what the, pop, uh, what the Spurs and Pop are doing. He only averaged 29 minutes last year. Now he's only playing around 30. They've added yeah. one minute. <laughs> They're not burning him out at all. No, not in his generation. Now you're making buckets off his passes. That's what Dalton Connect just did. <laughs> Lakers up 64 to 60 at the half. It's the American Express halftime report. Dennis Scott, Steve Smith. I'm Matt Weiner. Good to have you with us. We talked uh, pregame about Anthony Davis and this this emphasis on making him the guy moving forward. And again, 14 points at the half, and he's doing the guy kind of stuff. Yes, and I, and I think it's uh, accountability saying, A.D., we gave you an extension, I think, the year before last. Now you've got that $62 million waiting on you. Let's put the ball in your hands, Matt Smitty, and, and show people you can be patient. Got a little spacing. you got Rory in the corner knocking down three so you cannot leave him. Now you attack. So bonus, no help. You get an easy bucket. So they said, now, let's put you where? Dribble handoff. Miscommunication on defense. 
Go back door cut. Now you're showing this vision, showing you to be a great passer. So JJ said, we're tapping into all the AD, everything you do. This is bread and butter here, Smitty. Face up. So bonus, you're in no man's land. You can't leave a shooter once again. Rui at the top of the, the key. Jay's in your hands, and we're going to play through you. And more importantly, LeBron, we're taking the ball out of your hands. Think about that. Mm -hmm. There's not too many coaches that have been able to say to LeBron, for us to win, sometimes you, the ball has to be out of your hands. We have to go through AD. It's a sample size, Matt, but so far I like it. And you would assume LeBron's part of that conversation. Yes. He knows he's yes. in year 22. Come he's on. 39, about yes. to turn 40 years yes. of age. At some point, he's got to you know, let that usage rate come down a little bit and yep. let Anthony Davis be the guy. Sacramento made a 10-0 run late in that second quarter to get things close. How about a little Sabonis coverage? Well, you know, uh, he gives us a little bit of everything, <laughs> man. I, I love him. He's going to score. Obviously, obviously, last year he's going to rebound and assist. This one right here was dynamic, though. I love this over AD. But one thing he's done, he is really old school. It is four or five dribbles and bump. And this is where I think I want to see him get better at. I think, you know, being able to show shot and then make the next play and also be able to maybe knock down an elbow jump shot even mm. more and yep. more. Um, the one thing about him, he's going to give you the effort. He, he gives you the numbers. I just think right now for Sacramento, I would love to see more traditional pick and rolls with him. It's more like, you know, Fox gives it to him, and then it's a handoff. But I think Darren Fox, with the basketball, dribbling off a, hand, uh, off a pick and roll with Sabonis, helps Fox more than it helps Sabonis. Maybe a little more dynamic look yes. for the Sacramento Kings. Speed kills. Sacramento, really uh, fast. Yes, uh, Sabonis, you get your money to worth out of him. In yes, terms he does. Of effort, that guy plays he brings hard it. Never every that. single night. Kings within shouting distance, 64 to 60. Hey, is it possible that the defending champs just won't lose this season? Mm. Kind of playing like it. I know it's down there. 131 to 127. Lakers get the win. They go to the Kings go to 0-2. Sabonis had his triple double. Honey Line to De'Aaron Fox with 28. To Rizzo with 23. So all the stars came out to play at Crypto. LeBron, triple double, 32, 14, and 10. AD. 31, 14 of those in the fourth quarter. Rui with 18 and 9. You know, the Lakers are 3 0 for the first time to start the season 2010 2011. The Lakers get a big time win over the Sacramento Kings, a team that has caused them a lot of problems over the last few years. And guys, it was the fourth quarter. They entered it down seven. They started that quarter on a 21 to 0 run. LeBron in that span had 16 points and an assist. It was truly incredible. And in the fourth quarter, guys, AD and LeBron combined for 30 points, 11 for 11. Big time. Thank you, Fish. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, we talked obviously a lot about AD being the focal point of, of the team to start the season, and he's been phenomenal. He was amazing tonight as well. Um, but, you know, LeBron reminded everyone um, – <laughs> how much he still has in the tank in year 22 uh, to just kind of put his foot on the gas in that way to start that fourth quarter. Um, very few people have that ability. He's one of them. Uh, what a way to start that fourth quarter and, and get the team going in the right direction to secure this win. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it was a very impressive to yeah. see how the game flowed. Uh, you know, the, the end of the first quarter, they got a little lackadaisical Sacramento gap. End of the second quarter, wasn't that great either, but they continued to play their game, stick to the game plan. And then when they needed it, you know, I thought Reeves, uh, you know, did an exceptional job. Rui on the rebound, he, they, they played tough. Uh, and so they were able to capitalize on their superstars down the stretch. And LeBron just continued to, I mean, that was some big threes, man, he hit. No uh, doubt. I mean, you know, those are, some people will say, God, you know, move the ball around, get a better shot, but. He was cooking. Yep. King. Hey Lakers fans, welcome back to Lakers News Squad. Today, we're diving into an incredible game where history was made. LeBron and Bronny James shared the court, making them the first father-son duo to play in an NBA regular season game. As Shannon Sharp shared his thoughts on the game, let's go through what made this moment so unique, why it's meaningful for Lakers fans, and how the Lakers are looking as a team this season. 
First things first, let's talk about the electrifying moment when LeBron James and his son Bronny both hit the floor. Not only was it a historic event, but it also showcased the dedication and longevity of LeBron's career. Shannon Sharp reflected on this milestone, likening it to iconic sports moments like Ken Griffey Sr. and Jr. hitting home runs in the same baseball game decades ago. Seeing LeBron and Bronny play together is a testament to LeBron's commitment and longevity, as well as Bronny's talent and determination. For Lakers fans, witnessing this history feels surreal. This isn't just a proud moment for the James family, it's a major milestone in the NBA. LeBron's enduring skill and fitness have brought him this far, and having his son as a teammate is the kind of moment fans will remember forever. Shannon Sharp, who attended the game, spoke about the atmosphere and what it was like being in the stands for such a unique event. While he expected the crowd energy to be similar to when LeBron broke the all-time scoring record, he mentioned that it was a bit more subdued, likely because it was a regular season game and not the playoffs. Despite this, you could still feel a special sense of pride and awe from fans. Shannon's observation reminds us that while this might have felt like another game in the season, it was a significant achievement that adds to the legacy of both LeBron and the Lakers. It also reflects the dedication of Lakers fans who showed up to support a milestone and a family bond. One of Shannon's key points was about Bronny's journey and the challenges he'll face as he tries to establish his own identity on the team. Unlike his father, who came in with high expectations from day one, Bronny has a unique path as he develops his skills. Shannon highlighted how important it is for Bronny to work hard in scrimmages and practices since he may not get significant playing time immediately. Fans should be excited for Bronny's growth and understand that this is just the beginning. As he gets more comfortable on the court, we'll get to see how he carves out his own place in the NBA alongside his father's already legendary presence. Another crucial topic Shannon discussed was J.J. Reddick's impact on the Lakers. As a new addition to the coaching team, J.J. has already made a mark with his meticulous approach and deep understanding of the game. He's a coach who prepares for every play, understands what the opponents might do, and plans for counters. Shannon praised JJ's preparation and the energy he brings, noting that he's exactly the kind of coach the Lakers need. Redick, with his years of experience as a player and knowledge of in-game tactics, is an asset that can elevate the Lakers' strategies. Lakers fans should be optimistic about what he brings to the table, as his influence could help the team reach new heights. The Lakers' win over the Timberwolves wasn't just about numbers, it was a symbol of growth, both for the James family and for the team as a whole. From witnessing LeBron and Bronny's historical game to feeling the influence of J.J. Redick's expertise, it's clear the Lakers are gearing up for a season filled with potential. So, Lakers Nation, what do you think? How did it feel to watch LeBron and Bronny make history? Do you think Bronny has what it takes to follow in his father's footsteps? And how about J.J. Reddick's impact? Do you think his coaching can make a real difference this season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more content like this, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to Lakers News Squad, and turn on notifications so you never miss a game update. Let's go, Lakers!